This is Dean Elgar's innings where he beat India in a test match. And the one thing I love about this is just how often he hits the ball behind square on the offside. Elgar is like the burnt kernel in our popcorn. It's not that you can't love and admire him, it's just that he makes it so hard to enjoy what he does with all the nudging and slicing. But what if I told you that Dean Elgar had made the 31st most runs ever for an opening batter in test cricket? And I know it doesn't seem right, but this man has nudged and nurdled his way into the upper echelon. He's obviously not a great opener, but he's also very good. If you compare him to the history of openers by runs and average, he's way back here. But there are a lot of openers with extraordinary records from before the year 2000. England had three openers with averages 55 and higher. It takes them two players to make that number now. But since 2000, there are a lot less players with those sorts of records. Of recent times, we've had Rohit Sharma, but he's still early in his career. And most of the other guys are in the early 2000s. And even when you do this, Elgar is still kind of middle of the road. Even if you look at Elgar against other openers since he made his debut, he's still not a huge standout. But have a look at the players around him. Alistair Cook, Dimuth Karunaratna and Tom Latham. They're three of the best modern openers. I mean, Cook is an all-time great. But there's one thing that I think is worth mentioning about Dean Elgar specifically. He's been playing in South Africa and that is hard. On purpose, in fact. Fafty Plessy stated that they regularly made their pitches friendly for the seamers. Behind the press conferences, he would say that he backed his batters to survive the bruises more than the opposition. So batting in South Africa is tough and was designed specifically to be tough. And if you look at seam bowling in Elgar's era, the West Indies has been the only place where it's been tougher to play it than South Africa. 25 runs per wicket is incredibly low. Anyone making runs in South Africa when their primary job is to face quick bowling is doing well. And that is, of course, Elgar's kind of whole deal. He's averaged 46 at home. His record away from home is actually quite poor, despite the fact that he's made some really good hundreds in random places like Gaul, Old Trafford, and the Wacker. But he hasn't made runs continually away from home. But in South Africa, where everyone else finds it tough, he's an incredibly good player. How good? Well, here's the list of everyone with more than 1,000 runs in South Africa since readmission. Callis is next level, so let's move on from him. You've got Amler and De Villiers right behind him. So that's the three best South African modern batters sorted. And behind them, Elga. And just for fun, should we look at the bloke behind him on the... Oh, Sachin Tendulkar. Any list where you are ahead of Sachin Tendulkar is a good list for you personally. In fact, just mentioning Dean Elga and Sachin Tendulkar in the same phrase is a win for Dean Elga. And no one thinks that Elga can't play, but he's never been the star. And it actually began that way as well. Elgar had a weird beginning to his career. He batted at 6 and 7, which is an odd place to start your career if you're a top order player. He quickly maneuvered a change to the top of the order that at the time bothered some of the more senior players. He had a confidence that seemed to be misplaced at that time when you saw him squidge runs around. But those batters are gone, and now Elgar is the main player in this side. And think of some of the things he's managed to survive. The administration, social justice hearings, kneeling, South African cricket has been a shit show for a long time now, and maybe one of their few constants is Dean Elgar squidging runs around. In fact, since he made his debut, he has a lot more runs than the next best South African. And being that most of these players near him on this list, Faf, Hashim, Quinton, uh, all retired, Elgar has over 2,000 runs more than the next best, Temba Bavuma. He is South African batting in Test Match cricket. And that's why at 34, he's the sudden captain of his nation. They tried to cock, but he didn't want the job, or apparently even to be in the industry. Bavuma always seems a few failures away from losing his spot, and so Elgar is the perfect example of the best batter must captain rule, because everyone else might actually get dropped from this team. And Elgar has done something else, he's managed to survive two eras here, the one where it was easy to bat, and the one where it wasn't. Not everyone has. It's been really hard, and so Elgar staying on and actually continuing to do well has been exceptional. And I showed this recently in the Steve Smith video. This is the players on how they did in the hard batting era over the last couple of years compared to what they did in the good era. You can see plenty of greater players than Elgar have really struggled in the tough era. And he just hasn't. And it's also worth noting that not only is he one of the five who's actually better in the tough era, but there's something else here that's quite interesting. You can see that the other four players come in pairs. Kane Williamson and Tom Lathan are both from New Zealand, where the pitches are being aimed towards batting over the last few years. And Sri Lanka is one of the few places that hasn't been affected by the global drop in averages. So here's Kusil Mendes and Dimuth Karunaratna. And just to show that directly, here they are. And so batting hasn't been as hard in New Zealand and Sri Lanka as everywhere else. But in this era, unsurprisingly, it has been hard in South Africa. I mean, this is just low, right? Let's make it lower. This is now the average in that period against seam bowling only. 
you know, the thing that Elgar has to face a lot of. And the fact that he has managed to improve his average in this period, playing so much in South Africa, is remarkable. Which is just another word that you don't automatically link to Elgar. But there is something else I want to talk about. You might have noticed that the West Indies have been worse than South Africa in most of these metrics. There is actually one that South Africa is really low in. Balls per wicket. They're actually lower in that than the West Indies. A wicket has fallen to pace in South Africa every 45 balls. There are three bowlers in the history of the game with a strike rate lower than that with over 200 wickets. And unsurprisingly, two of them are South Africans. Wickets fall quick there. And I mention this because part of Elgar's role is to face a lot of balls. And he has. This is him compared to every other batter in South Africa. And he's done it while facing the new ball. It's remarkable. And it's not like he's got a slow strike rate. He's around 50, which is fine for his role. So he's not just hanging around. But by even managing just to stay at the crease so long, it's a super effort. And Elgar's main skill is hanging around and surviving. There's going to be few poems written about him as a player. He's at best a bridge between the great batters of yesterday in South Africa and hopefully the stars they'll find going ahead. He isn't pretty, even though not all of his shots are terrible. But there is just something so matter-of-fact about him, workmanlike. I mean, this is his walk off the ground after beating India in that tough chase. He looks like someone running late to his squash court reservation. He may not end up as one of the great test openers. But who had him pegged as someone on his way to being one of the top 30 run scorers in opening batting history? I mean, in truth, outside of Deed Alga, I don't think anyone ever thought he could be this good. 